Welcome back everyone. Uh, this is going to be the first of a series of videos um, covering video production. Primarily this is going to be um, documenting my experiences over the years and hopefully it can help you. And when I was thinking about it, I was thinking, where do I start with this? And I decided to start with the one area that doesn't get much attention um, when you, um, when everyone's talking about video production, they go on about cameras and lighting and everything else. But the reality is one of the areas that can really cause you a lot of grief is storage, media storage. And so over the, the next few episodes, I'm going to talk about that. Today, I'm going to talk about video compression and uh, the different uh, types of uh, file formats there are in respect to video editing. And then I'll, I'll touch on um, the type of editing that a lot of you would do and uh, the pros and cons of uh, using highly compressed formats versus um, lesser compressed formats, basically frame-based. So to keep things simple, I've given myself um, the opportunity to write down some notes here just to keep on track. So there are two types of file types, video file types. One is, there are lots of different types of compressions, but for the sake of keeping this simple, we'll just keep it the two basic areas. So you have what we call GOP, which is Group of Pictures, and it is a highly compressed format. And it, you know, you've probably heard the terms H.264 or H.265 and uh, all the different, uh, there are other variants of it, but um, uh, MPEG-4 which is a variant of that. How it works. Um, I'm going to bring up on the screen a series of images which will show you graphically and I'll try and describe as they're going along. So a group of pictures, and, and look, I'm not going to get deep in the weeds about this because it gets quite complex. This is just a way to give you a, 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 a basic understanding. When a camera is actually recording a, uh, a video, especially when um, you are recording in a, a, a GOP-based system, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. In each camera, there's, a, there's a, a mini computer. It's a processor. And what it's doing, it's analyzing each pixel within the video frame, and then it's working out, right, um, similarities between pixels in different aspects of the frame. And, and each, so within this um, GOP structure, it's re looking forward and it's looking back and it's doing comparisons and it's throwing away what it doesn't need because it says this pixel here is similar to this pixel there further up and so when we go to recreate this file, we can just use this database relative to that pixel. That's the simplest way to explain it. So it's, a, it's, it's throwing away a lot of data. That means compressing the files, keeping the file sizes down. And it, it's great. It, it's, a, it's a brilliant system. This day and age, you can record very high quality video and archive it, uh, very small file sizes. And then in the future, family members can watch it and in all its glory. It looks as good as the day it was recorded. Now, the difference here is that when you go to edit that video, there's quite a huge overhead for the computer because what it has to do, it has to pro reprocess that file. So it's behind the scenes, it's uh, interrogating the database, and it says, for this particular pixel, I have to use this color, and bang, 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 and so forth. And so it's, it's doing a lot of work behind the scenes for every frame of video in your editing process. And that's great for small, you know, uh, edits. And, and to be honest, in this day and age with most pro, uh, computers, they're very powerful and they can do it with, with ease. But when you're trying to edit something like that, 
over a, a very large, let's say you've got a two hour production, they can get very intense for the computer. And the other downside is that because it has thrown away so much data, if you want to do some intense uh, post-production, such as um, adding different colour themes, um, sharpening, um, any sort of alteration, a lot of video, this is, in, in those areas they can break down and it causes a lot of problems. So the second type of um, video file system is ProRes. Now, ProRes is an Apple format. There is an equivalent. Um, it's a Windows-based format and it's called Avid DNXHD. So for the sake of um, this exercise, because I'm in the Apple camp, I'm going to talk about ProRes. But um, for you Windows people, yes, there is an equivalent. And what I'm talking about regarding the ProRes files um, is duplicated within the Avid system. Now, ProRes files are frame-based and they record massive amounts of data. So each frame, um, almost all of the information relative to each pixel is stored. There is some compression going on, I'm not going to deny that, but again, that's getting down into the weeds. For the sake of this exercise, uh, there is a massive amount of data right, being stored so that it come post-production, you can do whatever you want with it and maintain the quality of that video. And that's what it's all about. And the other thing is that there is very little overhead for the computer. Because it's a frame-based uh, product, it will... Uh, you can have a two, three hour production and the computer can handle it with ease. You can be skimming across from one part of the, the timeline to the other. Not an issue. So therein lies the difference. Now with ProRes, um, I'll give you an example. So um, standard MPEG-4, H.264 compression you, for, for each... Um, when you, the best way to explain this is that when you're recording to a, to a data card, uh, most cameras will average somewhere around the, um, uh, what would you say, 20, 23 megabytes per second. ProRes 442 is, uh, for HD, 147 megabits per second. And 442 is, ProRes 442 is the current standard for most HD and 4K productions. If you want to get even better quality, you can go to ProRes 422HQ, and with that, you are looking at 220 megabits per second, again, at HD. So, as you can see, between um, your standard MPEG-4 files, and ProRes, there's a vast difference in data size. And that's the trade-off. So it's like everything in life. You want really high quality to be able to do some editing with, uh, you're going to have to have large file sizes. But conversely, if you want to keep um, your videos for family viewing, but you want to keep, you want to use very small amounts of um, you know, media storage, then you go for the highly compressed format. And that's what it's all about. Now, outside of that, I'm going to touch on video editing. And as I said, I'm going to break this down. So my next video is going to be about storage and how we manage video. For you, if you're looking at doing basic editing and using um, standard, highly compressed files, I would strongly recommend that SSDs are the way to go for you to work with. Work off these. They're brilliant. Now in my case, I have some very high volume ones. Like that's a two terabyte. I've got one terabyte and half, half a terabyte drives. And the, the, the beauty of these is the, the disk access speed, which is important in respect to video editing, um, are very fast. The, the speed that the computer can access the drive for editing 
uh, uh, beyond what the editing programs need. So they're really good from that point of view. The trouble is they're not cheap. And, as a, and they're good for smaller size productions. But when you get into the bigger size productions, you need a RAID. What's a RAID, you say? Well, a RAID is a series of hard drives mounted into a device that are combined to form a total pool of data access. So what is actually happening is that if you look at this graphic on the screen, you'll see that um, you have a hard drive, spinning hard drive. And you, the next graphic shows you two of these hard drives and shows you how a RAID system works in principle. You, the incoming data is split and written across the two drives. Now imagine you've got five of those drives. So you, are, you have a smaller amount of data per drive being written. And conversely, when you're reading that data, it goes the other way. And so the beauty of these systems is that it reads and writes quicker over multiple drives than it does from a single drive. The advantages you get from that is that you can use, so you can use standard 7,200 uh, RPM drives and have the sort of speeds you get from one of these. But you can have vast amounts of storage. So in my case, I have uh, a particular drive system called a G-RAID, and it's an eight terabyte RAID system. Now the two types of RAIDs, there is, <coughs> excuse me. Now there are two types of RAIDs. There is a redundant RAID and a non-redundant RAID. A redundant RAID means that you can have one or two or even more drives can fail and your data is still protected. A non-redundant RAID means that if you lose a drive, you lose all your data. And again, like everything in life, there's a balance. The redundant drive, um, RAID drives, because of the redundancy part of their processing, means that there is a speed um, degradation as a result of that in respect to reading and writing files. So with a non-redundant RAID system, which is known as the RAID Zero system, um, you get phenomenal read and write speeds. But keeping in mind that if one of those drives dies, uh, you lose your data. I have both those systems. I have a RAID Zero G RAID 8 terabyte box, which is my go-to for editing, and I also have a, uh, a redundant RAID system right, for storing long-term projects. I'm going to touch upon all this at, a, at the next video, but I just wanted to um, explain all this, and the reason I have that G-RAID for my main editing, as I said, that means I've got eight terabytes for um, when you come to dollar for dollar, there's no way I could buy eight terabytes of these. So I have eight terabytes on hand at any given time, which I can use with my ProRes files and store the ProRes files in the projects without a problem, and I get phenomenal speed out of it. And, and uh, the reason why I trust the G-RAIDs is because they uh, have been built from the ground up for this purpose. They use dedicated server-based hard drives and they have long guarantees. I mean, in, in this case, I've, I've been using this G-RAID box for 
just on seven years and it's only this early this year I had to replace the two drives. I hope this has been very helpful to you and uh, look out for the next video which will be more about, well it will go into more detail about the RAID systems and how I manage my media. And uh, uh, there will be further videos down the stream about different video production techniques that I use. And in between there will be my normal videos and other su subject matter. So um, I think I will put a stop to this right now and um, sign off. So till next time, thank you, goodbye. <laughs>